Hey guys, this is Christopher, and this is On Shape tutorial number 12, which will be all about the assemblies in On Shape. So, whenever you start a new file, you'll notice that there's always this assembly1 file inside of it, um, and it's always empty when you start. An assembly in a CAD program um, lets you import several parts into it and then connect them together into a bigger and more sophisticated model. So here I created a couple um, parts, pretty simple ones, that I'm going to put into the assembly in order to show you how it works. So I have a slot, a pin, a ball, and a socket. The pin has little key holes in the side so you can see when it's rotating and the ball also has this rim that goes around it so you can see when it's rotating and these dots on either end. So when we're in the assembly, um, to get the parts into it, um, our first tool is the insert tool and that's how we enter these parts. So I just click on it, we're really zoomed in here and I'm going to place each one of these in our assembly. Now you could place multiple of one thing in there like this. Now I have two spheres here. Um, but for now I don't need all of that so I'm going to delete one of these. And over on the side you can see all of our parts. We have five listed here and there's five right here. I'm just going to delete this last one, which is the second ball. Right now all of them are listed as part one. That's because if we come to um, the individual files, they're all part one. If we wanted to, we could rename this and come back to our assembly. And now we have slot there instead of another part one. But uh, we won't be using these a whole lot right now. I'll just go ahead and go through the um, the mates right now. Mating in an assembly just connects two um, parts together. It constrains them together. Sometimes they can still move a little bit and sometimes it fully defines them in that spot. So before I start connecting these together, I'm going to connect one of them to the origin. The origin acts like a point, like any other point, um, except it doesn't move. So if we connect one of our parts to the origin, then it won't move either. Now I'm going to use the fasten mate. This is the simplest one um, in order to connect it to the origin. And if you just select this point and move your mouse around a little bit, you can get it at different angles. I'm going to do it so it's facing up. Just click there and then also click over here on my uh, my slot box so that it's facing in the opposite direction. Um, so they're in the same plane. My, my two selections are in the same plane and I can go ahead and solve that and it is fixed. I can't drag it around anymore. It's connected to the origin. The um, FastenMate just connects two points together. It can't rotate, it can't slide or anything. It completely fixes them together so that the, the axes are locked. Now that this can't move, I'm going to connect this other box to it. So again, I could use the fasten mate and click on that corner and this corner, and it'll put them together. Um, I could also use the planar mate, um, but before I do that, I'm also going to point out that if I try to connect the corners together, but not in the same plane, see how this one is along this way. If I select the other one so it's this way, 
now it's not connected but side by side the way I wanted it to. Um, but anyway, the, another way to connect these boxes together would be with the planar constraint or mate. I'm going to have to do three mates um, instead of just one because we have to connect this face to this face, this face to that face, and the faces that it will be touching each other. So if I just select these two faces, um, that's good. Even though they're intersecting, I can still move it around. Um, if I look from the front, you can see that I can't move it up and down. These two faces will always be in line with each other in the same plane. So if I do that to the other two faces also, then they will also not be able to move. Now I can only move it back and forth. Now you'll notice um, whenever I did that planar mate, let me delete it and do it again. The boxes overlap and the first box isn't connected to the origin anymore. Even though we told it to go to the origin. The reason why it's doing this is because whenever you are adding a mate, um, the CAD program kind of um, disregards all of the other mates that are in place and it just isolates the two objects you're working with and mates them so you can see how they're going to be mated. Um, and then as soon as you accept it, then it re-evaluates all the other mates. Um, and it'll go back in place to the origin. And now I'm going to use this last planar mate to connect these faces together. And now we've locked it in three directions with the planar mate. And now neither of these can move. So that is the fasten and planar mate. Um, most of the other mates here are for cylindrical um, objects. So like the first one here, the revolute, um, if I select, it doesn't matter the order here in this case, if I select um, the cylinder, making sure that I'm selecting the center, if you select this outer surface, then it will um, do the center of our cylinder. And then also select the center of this arc here and accept it. Um, now, you'll notice that it cannot move up and down, but it can rotate. So that's what the Revolute Mate does. It locks the um, position along the axis, but it does allow rotation about the axis. If I delete that and instead do a slider mate between these, then I can't I can't rotate this anymore, but instead I can move it up and down. Still only on that axis, but I can move it up and down. If I delete this also and do the cylindrical mate, it's like a combination of the revolute and slider. Again, with these same two points. Now it allows me to go up and down and rotate around the axis. So um, the cylindrical mate is the most um, gives the most freedom of the three, uh, but these are more specific if you need them. A lot of times you can also use the cylindrical mate and a planar mate if you need to, or a combination of some of the other ones to get a similar effect as the slider mate. Now we can also use the pin and slot mate here um, to confine this pin um, to only travel along the slot. Now it will be able to go outside of it, it's not going to stop when it touches it, um, but it still will only be on that plane. So in this case it does matter that we select our pin first and then one of the points on our slot. 
If I just accept it here, it's going to be moving in the wrong direction. So I need to go and edit and uh, road, uh, reorient the secondary axis. And now it should be in the right direction. So like I said before, it can go beyond the slot, but it's still in the right plane. So I'm just going to leave that constraint there and now move on to this, um, the ball mate. So I'm going to click on that, select um, the center of my ball, select the center of here, accept it, and now that is confined to be inside the socket. You can see that it's free to rotate any way it wants to. Um, also for the pin and slot, you can see that this can also rotate. Next I'm going to get rid of these planar constraints. Now these can move freely again, at least this one can. And next I'm going to do the parallel mate. So right now this um, cube, because it can move around freely, really these two sides could be unparallel. Um, right now they're not, but if we use the parallel constraint between these two, Um, now they have to be parallel. It didn't really change anything in this instance because they were already parallel. But if one of these cubes was rotated like uh, 45 degrees, then it would set it to parallel instead. We could also do this between, say, this side and then a side that's rotated 90 degrees. And now... you can see that um, the ball used to be on this side but it had to rotate 90 degrees for this side to be parallel to that and now it's on the bottom so they weren't parallel until we set that and if we delete it um, now this would be able to rotate back but those are the main mating tools in the on-shape assembly. Very useful if you have many parts that you're trying to put together. In an assembly you can see if parts don't fit correctly. Um, if they don't then you can just come back and edit them. Like if I um, come to the slot here and change my extrude to only a half an inch and come back to my assembly, it updates live. So assemblies are very good when you are designing multiple, uh, multiple parts for, um, for whatever you're designing, especially with the live updating assembly. So I hope this tutorial was useful to you. Um, I hope you understand better how to use the mate tools in the on-shape assembly and if you did make sure to subscribe to see the next tutorial on on-shape and give a thumbs up if you like the video